welcome back. How'd you like my new intro, guys? I worked on that over the Christmas break. I think it turned out pretty good. Today we're going to be looking at a client who I've been seeing for about six months. And as you can tell by her picture, she's got a lot of nail fungus going on here. So we're going to look at all the things that I do and have done to address her fungal crumbly nails and discuss a little bit about the future as well. So stay tuned. I'm also going to come across a problem that I've uh, only seen a couple of times in my practice. And so I'm excited to show you that and figure out how we're going to overcome it. So as we zoom in here, I want you to pay special attention to that white patchy area that is just pointed out there and it kind of makes a little circular area on her nail bed. Have you seen this before? If you do nails or what do you think is going on right there? Love to hear that in the comments. Just so you guys have a better understanding of where she came from, this is the first time she came to see me. Her nail was completely detached from the nail bed. And it's, you know, obviously very fun fungal and dry. That was after the first pedicure. And then she came back again. This is about three months later, so I didn't take a picture the second time. And so you can see the nail bed is starting to reattach. She does use a topical on her nails that she got from Mexico. She is Mexican herself and she bought it um, over the counter down there that I guess she, she can get a prescription for here, but it's less, it's more affordable in Mexico. And I, I don't have the name of the um, topical, so I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> I did request it, but I just haven't received it yet. Um, and then she also has my antifungal nail treatment oil that she says she uses as well but I don't know exactly how um, how she's using both of them at the same time, how much she's using them. Um, she also has a few other health issues. She's got um, autoimmune disease. Um, I'm not sure if she's pre-diabetic or diabetic. She's um, got fatty liver disease as well. So there's a lot of immune system issues going on and that can definitely play into how well your body responds to treatment and if your body can fight off the fungus um, with the assistance of the topical that she's using. So she's not going to be taking the oral medications that are available because of her fatty liver disease, um, so, which is a good idea. She just shouldn't be doing that. So uh, my job here is then to debride the nail as much as, as I can so that the topical can actually get into the nail plate where the infection is and help to kill it off. Her left foot here is more involved with the fungus than her right foot. Um, and on this toe and her fourth toe, you'll see the skin um, is a little bit kind of rough looking. And we think that that is a separate issue. We believe it's probably psoriasis or some sort of eczema, something like that, because it hasn't changed at all throughout the course of the care and other factors regarding her athlete's foot situation have improved. So we're thinking that it's not part of the athlete's foot. All right, so as I start the debriding process, I'm using the carbide bit to get the nail thinned out. And as I'm using it, I can see that the nail is starting to crumble a little bit more. It's not a solid nail plate, which is a little disheartening because I thought we were making a lot more progress with her nails healing and um, just getting that infection under control.
So now you can see on the tip there where the whitish yellowish patches are apparent that nail just crumbled away. So what do you think is going to happen when I start going over that white patch that's closer to the cuticle and in the center of the nail? So you'll see me swipe my finger across the nail and press down on it a few times here and there. And that is just me kind of testing to see how much nail is left before I hit nail bed. <laughs> so as I was pressing down, I could tell it was kind of, it felt hard, but that center part was kind of giving way a little bit more than the other areas. So at this point, I'm just going to take my rasp here and just see what happens when I start to pull away some of the crumbly aspects of the nail. Making a decision of how much to take off is sometimes pretty difficult because on one hand you have the client who wants to have their nail look normal and doesn't want to have their nail taken back really far and look um, all lumpy and bumpy and just unnatural. Um, but on the other hand, if I don't take it back and I don't clear out some of this stuff, then the nail is going to keep being infected and the, the fungus is going to keep eating the nail. So, you know, when you have the discussion with the client, they have to understand those two things. And oftentimes, if they're desperate enough, they're okay with it. So with her, she didn't like the idea. But as, I, as I'm going in further and further with this nail, I can see that there is a big, empty space underneath where that white patch is which tells me that the fungus has eaten away the nail from the inside. And any topical that she puts on it is not going to penetrate the nail unless I remove the top few layers of the nail. So I'm just gonna gently go in with my rasp and pick away a little bit at a time and make sure that I don't hit her nail bed um, and kind of poking around just to make sure that she's not uncomfortable with me doing that and then I'm going to go in and try and remove some of it um, with a specific more specific method than the e-file. You guys, I'm really sorry about the quality of this video. <laughs> um, the light on my dust extractor is super bright and um, this isn't as focused as it needs to be. It's not as clear as I wish it were. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, there's gonna be um, more blurriness later on as well. And so I had to cut the video a little short because it just wasn't worth even showing. It was too blurry. But hopefully you can see it enough to kind of get an idea of what it is I'm working with and you find the information useful regardless.
So I'm literally going to take down this nail as thin as I can. She starts to get a little bit sensitive. And so at that point I stop because I don't want it to be uncomfortable for her. But I just kept going a little bit at a time, checking in with her and making sure she's okay and taking it off as far as I could. This client drives two hours every month to come and see me because there is nobody in her area that can help her with her toes. She doesn't want to go to a podiatrist. She doesn't want to have her toenails taken off. And so no other pedicurists in my area do what I do. If you are a pedicurist and you want to make the switch to do more healthcare related pedicures, I promise you, you'll never not be busy. You will always be busy. <laughs> People are, once they find you, they will be a client for life and everybody else that they know is going to find out about you. And so you will always have uh, clients to serve and there's so much fulfillment in this type of work. Um, if you don't know where to get trained, there are several different places you can do it. If you're interested in um, my course online, I'm going to be launching it later on uh, late January. Um, feel free to sign up for my waitlist. If you go onto the link in my bio, um, you can find that through there and I will send you a quick PDF that outlines the modules and the stuff that I'm gonna be teaching in the course. So um, that's there for you coming up very soon. So this toenail, as you could see, half of it crumbled away, kind of similar to the, the great toenail. It had that little white patch. And all that white patch ends up being is um, air, kind of caught underneath the nail, like it's lifted. And it's yellowed because the fungus has been eating away the nail. It's not a natural nail anymore, it's infected. Um, and so that happened on that nail, and the, the um, little nail that I'm working on too has some patches as well so I tried to thin that one out as well
So how was everyone's Christmas? If you celebrate Christmas, did you have a good one? Did you get anything that you really wanted or do anything you really wanted to do? I got a, um, a sauna, not a really expensive one. It's more like a, looks like a phone booth, um, soft sided phone booth. <laughs> and I was super excited to get this sauna because I have been trying to treat chronic Lyme disease. And part of that is, um, detoxing and, um, so sweating is a really healthy part of detoxing and I can't exercise enough to sweat right now. So that was going to be my way to do it. Well, I went to use it for the first time last night and I'm sitting there and after about 15 minutes, I heard this big pop <laughs> and it scared the bejesus out of me. And I thought the place was going to catch on fire. So I shut everything down. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to send it back. I'm so annoyed. I was really looking forward to it. <sighs> so that was my big exciting, um, Christmas present. <laughs> Okay, so on this foot, you can see the great toe has the most problem. And again, you see the white, yellow patches all the way back to the cuticle, which is very disheartening to see because they weren't there the last time. <sighs> so um, it's it can be kind of like in an, a frustrating road, the healing process. Um, and honestly, I don't really know exactly what she's doing at home. Is she good at utilizing the topicals every day, twice a day. I mean, she says she is, so I have to take her at her word. Um, but, uh, you know, when you come back with your toe looking worse than the last time, um, in some respects, it kind of makes your heart sink a little bit. Um, and I just liken that to healing from anything chronic. Sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back, and it's a long, long road. And like I said before, a lot of it probably has to do with her internal um, environment. And, you know, she's a big sugar lover and that feeds the fungus. So what she needs to do is stop eating junk food and sugar. And I don't know if she drinks alcohol, but if she drinks alcohol, she needs to stop drinking alcohol, clean up her gut. And, um, and that will give her a much better, um, you know, chance of... A quicker recovery not to say she couldn't recover without do it without doing all that stuff but it definitely would speed things along if she were able to do that
So here's what I want her to do. I'd like for her to stop taking the, using the topical she's been using for Mexico because I feel like it's confounding the results. I don't know what's working and what's not. Um, and I'd like for her to just use the recover nail treatment oil until that's gone or for another month or two to see if it really helps. <clears throat> if it doesn't, then it means the oils that I have in the nail treatment oil are not attacking the, the uh, pathogen. And so I would then switch her over to another product that I'm releasing on January 1st. I call it Remedy. It's an antifungal, like um, athlete's foot sort of drop. Um, similar to the nail mycosis by Imperial Feet, except it's completely non-toxic and organic. And what I like about the remedy is that you can use it on the entire foot for the athlete's foot, as well as the nails. And because it has uh, glycerin in it, it's going to penetrate into the nail itself, and that will carry the essential oil into the deeper parts of the nail. Um, and so. I really think that that might be the key to her recovery, um, along with just keeping the nail as cut back as we can um, while she's healing. Okay, so now I'm coming in with a diamond bit, which is significantly softer and less gritty than the carbide bit. And I'm going to gently try to exfoliate a little bit more off the surface of this nail plate and smooth out the edges surrounding that big gaping hole. So uh, hopefully it doesn't snag on any of her socks and, um, you know, it's just a little bit more smoothed out and aesthetic looking. The texture of her nail at this area reminds me of a piece of rotting wood. It just kind of splinters and is spongy um, and you just want to kind of pick it apart and it and, and, and it just kind of crumbles um, once you start picking at it. So you have to be very careful when you're working with this type of nail because you don't want to go through it so quickly that you end up hitting the nail bed and damaging the nail bed. That's the last thing we want to do. So just be very, um, you know, methodical and gentle as you're using the tools on nails like this so that we don't do any damage.
And I had to cut that other side short because it was just so blurry. It was not really worth um, showing, but um, you got the idea. <laughs> this side looks a lot more clear, so yay! And here is the end of the f of the video. Unfortunately, it, the camera does not refocus, and I wasn't able to get you a new, clearer picture of um, the nail as I'm debriding it further. But um, I do have clearer end pictures that are coming up here in just a second. So stay tuned for the end result before and afters. So you can see I took the nail way back as far as I could and she was happy with the result. Hopefully we'll see a much better, clearer nail on her next visit. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit today and hanging out with me and I hope you guys learned something. I will see you next time with a new video with clearer images. <laughs> Have a great day everyone.